Hi everybody, this is Reese Barber from Audiology Associates. Thanks very much for watching our Ewax Removal Compilation video today. Three patients in this compilation video for you. Uh, this first patient here, you can see very, very dry type of wax, this one, or almost crumbly as well. You can tell it's gonna be dry just by the appearance of the wax. It tends to have this little bit of a sheen to the wax, uh, so a little bit more shiny. And you can also see the canal wall around the outside edges there, you're getting these little sort of white lifts of skin coming away. And that's a good indication that the skin inside the ear canal is a little bit drier. And because the skin is dry, it's going to pull the oils out of the wax, which is going to make it much, much harder and drier itself. Uh, not always the easiest ones to remove with suction these, just because when the, you get these sort of drier waxes, because you can have little bits of skin embedded in there and the surface becomes a little bit bumpy. Uh, and when you're trying to get a grip on it with a suction tube, what you do is as you put the suction tube on top, with all those little bumps on top of the surface, the suction tube sits on top of the bumps. So it just pulls air in from the side so it doesn't give it a really good suction grip. Obviously to get a good grip, you want a good clamp onto it and then that stops any more air escaping into the tube. So it really holds on to that plug. But you can see we're wrestling with this one now on the way out it's on its way there out that comes there you go you can see it's very very dry material this one uh, don't forget guys there are three patients in this compilation video second patient uh i can't quite remember i think the second patient is a little bit longer so keep an eye out for that one um i've prepped a couple of videos in advance and i can't quite remember but, uh, whether this is the longer one in the middle but we're taking this away now you can see we're working our way down the canal it's coming away in pieces and <laughs> i dropped a little bit on the uh, in the bowl of the ear there let's go and pick that up before we go any further there we go so you can see all these tiny little bits it becomes very very crumbly it sort of disintegrates almost as soon as you take it out of the ear canal uh we can see a few little pieces there you can really see those white skin lifts uh, about halfway down that ear canal there you'll be able to see that little sort of lift and we've got this deeper section of wax which is just resting down there against the uh, the eardrum so we're going to take that away we're just going to pull this top edge try and take it away from the drum peel very very slowly there we go just to get that bit away out that comes i think there's a little tiny bit there we go we can just see the the sort of leading edge of it there just in front of the eardrum so we're just going to take these a couple of little little pieces away there we go and tiny little bit there and this is what i meant about that so you can see that lift of skin there now as soon as i got a grip on that if it was dead skin it would have just peeled straight away with the suction let me do the measurements before i forget two just over two centimeters just over three quarters uh yeah Three quarters of an inch, that one as well, guys. Um, yeah, with that piece of skin there, you could see as I got a grip on it, it just lifted and fell straight back down. It didn't come away at all. Now, that's because it's still attached to the fresher skin beyond. Now, if it was dead skin, as you got a grip on it, what it would do is just cleave that skin right the way across, it would come away. If you try and lift that, what you're gonna end up doing is trying to peel it down and it's gonna end up hitting that fresher skin. But if that peel carries on, like when you get a pull on the side of your nail, it's just gonna bleed, it's just gonna carry it. So we'll leave that there, let it migrate this way out. Uh, and. Uh, the hopefully patient will start breaking away with wax and everything and come away now. Right, you can see here, very, very similar type of wax to the first patient here. So that sort of uh, crumblier type of material. Now, this is a bit of a different one because what you have here is this hardened up surface layer of wax. So what I mean by surface layer is when we're, I'm always talking about looking at it from the, from the, the lateral portion. So I'm talking about looking at it from the outside edge. So what you're looking at straight away is the surface of the wax. Now what you can get with some patients, we had talked about the last patient having this dry ear canal. So basically it's drawing all the oil out of that wax. So it's making it really, really tough. Now what you can get in some patients is you get a much wetter, softer wax in the sort of more medial portion that the portion of the ear canal is closest to the eardrum you get a much softer wax there and as it migrates out the wax starts to harden and it forms these harder surfaces and then you've got this much much softer layer underneath so you can see this plug here as we're starting to pull this forward you can see the surface the top of that plug of wax very very hard look underneath though can you see how it looks a lot softer down there uh, and that's usually a good indication you're going to encounter some of this softer wax now if it's been in there a little while then what will happen is that will usually have backed up in the system uh, down towards the eardrum it's really wedged in here at the moment so we're having to bring the rosin inserter in you can see it's just, it's tough on the surface, but as you sort of pull through, you can see that rosin insert really kind of travel quite quickly as we tend to pull it through, which means that that's softer wax sitting behind uh, the surface layer as well. So I'm just trying to maneuver this down, trying to pull it further down the canal because it really doesn't want to budge. 
I'm working around the outside and I'm looking for any purchase we can get on this wax. I'm trying to do it. You can see now as we break that surface layer, see how we hit this almost clay type of wax underneath. And that's the, the sort of precursor then for that softer wax that we're gonna hit. So I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in here. You can see just to help things along a little bit. It's uh, because the wax is almost three different consistencies through this plug, it's becoming really, really difficult. So you've got hard wax on the surface, clay, very sticky wax, wants to stick to the surface of the canals, and you've got this very soft wax behind it. So we're having to uh, just sort of chip away at this plug. There we go, lifting from side to side, trying to work the oil down the side of this plug here, and also trying to loosen it from the canal walls. Uh, guys, one of my colleagues has been in contact with me as well uh, from Swansea University, from their audiology program down there. That's actually where I went to uh, uni to study uh, part of my audiology qualification anyway. Um, so uh, they've asked if I can give a shout out to Swansea University and to the audiology department and the marketing department there as well. So they stumbled across my videos, uh, I, I think it was last week. So uh, hi to everyone in Swansea Uni, hi to everyone studying audiology in Swansea University as well as the marketing team and Barry as well. I'm going to shout out to Barry. Uh, so you can see uh, this one, oh, I'll try and if I can, <laughs> if I remember, I will try and leave a link to that audiology program. If you are thinking about studying audiology, you're based here in the UK, Swansea University, fab university if you study audiology. I'm not biased at all, <laughs> but it's a really, really good uni if you ever, uh, if you ever want to study uh, audiology. Um, I'll try and leave a link to the audiology program in the description, if I remember. I don't always, but I will try. So you can see that we're just starting to chip this away. We've got the Jobson horn in here. We're starting to break this down. It just did not want to budge. So we had to break all of this down with the Jobson horn. Um, there we go. You can see, look at that layer. You can see that sort of dry skin there as well, which has been sitting underneath a hardening, that, that piece of the wax plug that's uh, coming into contact with the ear canal wall there. So just bringing this around. There we go, you can really see that plug starting to move now. Look at this breaking down. It is really coming away now. You can really, really see this uh, all starting to sort of cleave apart now in the canal. Doesn't want to let me pick it up. I'm trying to get the Jobson horn in there. Nope, is it gonna go? That doesn't want to budge. Just pick it up with suction this time. Look how long this piece is now. You can see that hard layer. The color differences in that wax as well, all these different sort of drynesses and consistencies, dryness, yeah, dryness, uh, uh, and consistencies all the way through. There we go, you can see those lifts. We talked about these lifts on the last patient, all around that canal wall, that very, very dry type of wax. And then we had that clay wax in the middle and the softer wax in the center there as well. So we'll just, this is why I talked about if it's skin that's ready to come away, do you see how easily that skin came away? As soon as you put the suction tube on there, it just peeled all the way down. So that skin was ready to come away. Now with the last patient you saw in this compilation, as we moved along the surface of that canal, uh, just in that skin, it just didn't want to budge away. And that shows me that the skin is, is fresher. It doesn't want to come away there. So there we go, just taking some of those lifts away. There's the eardrum there, uh, looking very, very healthy. Uh, let's take a look at the other side. Very similar story. Now this looks like a harder surface layer, exactly the same as the other ear. That's more common to have you know, similar wax problems in both sides. Uh, you don't really normally get a lot of difference between uh, ear canals. You do sometimes, you do sometimes get different waxes. There might be the anatomy of the ear canal, the shape, the size, those kind of things can play a part in that. Uh, sometimes when you see the videos as well, patients come through with problems on one side that they've noticed been really, really softening and oiling that side. And the other side, they didn't really know they had any waxings. They're not really causing them any issues. And the wax does tend to be a little bit drier then. But it's coming away nicely. It's all sort of breaking down slowly there. There we go, you can see it's crumbling almost. Now we're just hitting, what I can see next is that sort of clay type layer uh, that we were going through. It's a bit like geology, this when you're kind of working through your layers of wax in here. Uh, but it's, it's starting to break down around the outside edges. I'm trying to take the crumbly stuff away because you tend to find the outer section, when it gets a little bit harder, sometimes it gets a little bit more crumbly, which is what's happened here. So as you're getting your grip, those little tiny pieces are all breaking away and they're not really getting into the tube very well. So we're bringing the Rosen inserter out again, but look at that, it's just, pulling through. I'm trying to get into that bottom, that base layer uh, of harder wax to pull this through. But that's all it's doing. It's 
it's basically taking that outer harder layer away just because that clay layer underneath is not really holding on to it as well. Um, and you can see that that's exactly what's happened. So I was hoping to try and use that harder layer to pull the whole plug through. Uh, but it's just pulling away from the layer underneath, unfortunately. So now we need to tidy up all those looser bits that come off. You can see that gray material there, that sort of more, more little bit, can't teeth in there. that more beige material, I should say, underneath. And that's the dry skin layer there. Let's see if we can uh, just pull this side section. You can see it's more just disintegrating. Now the difficulty with the rosin inserter is if you do this a lot, you can see that surface is really broken down now. Well, you're not gonna get the grip. The rosin inserter is such a, such a thin end on there. It's just gonna keep pulling through those little gaps all the time. So just working the sides here. You can see it's really, really holding on in there. Let's bring the trusty jobs in. Now this made the difference in the last one. Can we get the gap in there though? You can see a little bit more skin there, that sort of beige material coming around the side. Let's break all that surface. Let's sort of scoop all the surface, broken down pieces away. There we go. Out that comes. Right, rose and insert again. Are we gonna be able to get into this layer? Or oh. There we go, now you can see it starting to move. We've managed to get hold of a piece of skin actually, but look how that's just unfolded. It hasn't pulled the plug out. What it's done is it's taken that, that middle section, sort of unfolded it, unwrapped it out, uh, which means it's still, that base layer is still stuck in there. But now we've got this big loose layer in front, so we need to get rid of that now. There we go, out that comes. You can see the skin pulling down from the side of there. All of that material underneath there is dry skin, and that's what we got the grip on with the rosin inserter there. Let's get beyond this one. You can see these plugs are pretty big old plugs. Don't forget to stay tuned for the ruler shot as well, guys. There is another patient coming up after this one as well uh, at the end of the video, so make sure you stay tuned for that one as well. But it's coming away really nicely now. That rosin inserter, you can see we've hit a really tough layer. So, oh, look at that coming away, that whole section. These were pretty, pretty full ear canals. That is a chunky, chunky plug, that one. Uh, so it's coming away really, really well. Look at that, that is dry as a bone as well. Um, similar story in this one, you can see those little lifts there. Uh, you can see the eardrum beyond as well. Patient, my goodness me, this lovely, this was actually a lovely lady. Uh, never had her ears cleaned out ever before. Never really thought they had too much of a difficulty. We're getting a, a few issues, thought they had water trapped in their ear. Came through the clinic, my, oh my, <laughs> six, no, yes, six centimeters, two and a half inches worth of earwax out of those two ear canals there, guys. Uh, yeah, basically he thought she was getting water trapped in her ear and didn't even realize they had a wax problem. When I cleared the first ear canal, I'm like, they were going, oh my God, everything makes a sound. They could, we got a little fan running in the room to keep the room a bit cooler uh, and they could hear the fan. They asked, was the fan running when they came in as well? And we had to say to them, yeah, it was, but oh my goodness me, they heard so much more, it was incredible. Uh, last patient in the compilation, guys, so you can see it's coming away. Uh, ah, right, okay, now this lovely lady comes through relatively regularly. Uh, tends to have an issue as far as skin is concerned. You can see that's uh, the problem here. Now, you'll see that's probably what I went in with the crocodile forceps to start with. If we get regular patients, we kind of know the tools that are gonna work on certain types of patients better than others. Uh, now, this particular patient, they get an issue with their skin, basically migrating out of the ear canal, but it never quite detaches properly on the outer section of the ear canal. So you know, we talked about the skin migrating from the deeper section to the outermost section, so it's sort of traveling along that conveyor belt. Um, and when it gets to the outer portion, which is basically what you see on the outside edge here, it breaks away and comes away with wax. Now this particular patient, it doesn't. So what you end up with is it keeps migrating out. It does detach right at the entrance to the canal, but it keeps going. So we end up with this sort of layer that starts coming away and then eventually with just with gravity and because it's softened up a little bit, it just sort of collapses down and the patient starts to hear, get some uh, hearing issues. So they come through roughly about every six months. So don't forget when the skin's migrating, it's only by about, I think it's about just under two mils a month. So it's not migrating by a lot. Uh, so you can see why after six months, we, we've got about this much that's come off the outside edge, more likely to collapse down. Eardrum looking lovely and healthy. This is what it looked like beforehand. Uh, this is what it looks like afterwards. A patient very pleased to get that out. Now, in fairness, they don't normally have to have this other ear cleaned out that often. It's probably every other visit uh, because it does tend to break down a little bit more. Um, but what you'll see 
is as we get a grip on this, is <laughs> taking the patient's hair in there a little bit as well. We're just working on this plug. Now we've got the standard size Zolna tube on here. Now I've gone in with the Zolna tube because this is a softer material. As it was on the first ear canal, you can see we started off with the forceps, but then because the, the skin material was just a little bit more, a uh, little bit softer, it just meant that we could get a better grip with the suction tube. Now you can see here, look at this pulling away. So we've got this grip, Look at that coming away. You can see it there. Look how long that is. We've got this long piece of sort of keratin, this long piece of skin, and this big, big blob of wax attached to the end of it there. Uh, and you can see there's more in there as well. So we're just going to grip this grip on this next section. There we go. That's the skin gone. Uh, let's take a look. There's the eardrum looking much, much healthier. So this is what it looked like beforehand. And this is what it looks like afterwards. You can see a very, very big difference there. So two and a half centimeters, one inch worth of earwax there guys uh, from both ear canals well earwax and skin I should say really um, patient very very relieved to get that done so we'll see this patient again roughly about six months and we'll uh, we'll get that out there then for them well guys thank you very much for watching our video today if you did enjoy the video don't forget you can like share follow heart subscribe do all those things for me that'd be absolutely fantastic are you suffering with earwax problems then by all means come along and see us there's a link to our, uh, our website in the uh, channel for description you can see where we're located and book yourself in with myself or the lovely Mr. Taylor Green. Uh, and as always, guys, take care of yourselves, take care of your ears, and take care of one another. And I'll see you again real soon. Bye, everyone.